Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Restoring Hope with Crosswinds Counseling. I'm your host, Curtis Smith. Thank you for joining us tonight. And thanks to all of our sponsors who make it possible for us to be here each and every week. Our community partners are Tesco, Shepherd Community Center, and Prime 47 Downtown. The support of these tremendous companies makes it possible for us to be here every Thursday night at 930 on WHMB TV 40. This is a special week on our show because the tables are being turned on me. I usually interview guests, but tonight I will be the interviewee. And to do the interviewing is my good friend and the chief growth officer of Crosswinds Counseling, Mark Bow. Curtis. Mark, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm in the chair, man. <laughs> <laughs> How does well, it feel? You know, it's, it's special. And, <laughs> right. and I'm sure most folks at home uh, recognize that. But <laughs> hey, listen, I'm, I'm thankful to be here because, you know, as we were talking several weeks ago, you're on this program and, and folks, you know, thousands of folks watch mm -hmm. you every week. Right. And they say, gosh, Curtis Smith. <laughs> what, what's his story? What, what, you know, how, how did the guy get to be where he's at? So, yeah. you know, we're going to, we're going to spend this program, you know, getting to know about you, about your heart and uh, your thoughts on where things are in, in the world of hope. Yeah. And, uh, but just starting out, uh, give us a little, give us the backstory. Give us the, uh, the 411, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the 411. Uh, you know, I have a really weird and interesting career path. Um, I've been at Crosswinds for the last year and a half or so, mm -hmm. since January of uh, 21. Prior to that, I was at Parkview Health System in uh, Fort Wayne um, for about five years. Okay. But I spent most of my career, 21 years, uh, at the ABC affiliate in Fort Wayne doing the weather. I was the chief meteorologist at uh, Channel 21 in Fort Wayne. and. Um, it was a wonderful career. I loved being on TV. Um, it was a lot of fun. And then it kind of changed on me. Yeah, well, here we are. But, <laughs> yeah, here but we folks, are. I mean, the reality of it is now you know why he's so good. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, but, thank uh, you, Mark. But, yeah, it, it's, it's been a real pleasure uh, watching uh, how God's used the program, how yeah. he's used you, how we've teamed together to be able to bring folks together. And uh, this is, a, this is just a special opportunity. Um, tell me about um, where you grew up, your background, yeah. a little bit about your family. Yeah, so I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. I have absolutely no idea why I don't have an accent. Half of my family had no accent. The other half had such thick southern accents you could barely understand a word they were saying. So I got lucky um, is one way to look at it. I, I would like to think God knew that I had a career in television sure. coming and I yeah. couldn't have that Southern accent and go everywhere and, and have it work out. So grew up in Memphis. My parents and my sister are still there. Okay. Um, went to Southern Illinois University for the first of my three uh, college degrees. Met my wife there. She and I have been married. Uh, this fall will be 28 years. Three boys. Um, they're 26, 23, 20. And... Uh, yeah, I've just lived a charmed life, a blessed life. God has taken care of me and has moved me to different parts of the country and different roles and different organizations in a way that I never could have dreamed. Tell me, what was, when you were young, was it always kind of, were, were you the weatherman at 10? <laughs> were, were, were you doing that then? Or I, how, did, how did the whole journey start? Yeah, I was always into television. I was always announcing things. I was a real sports nut when I was a kid. And so I was always the guy kind of announcing the games as we were getting together okay. as neighborhood kids to play. And that did turn into a fascination with the weather. And then I was blessed to go to a high school, and this is the 80s, so very strange, that owned a TV station. Okay. And it wasn't an internal only TV station. It was a TV station that broadcast out on the cable systems of Memphis. Right. And it was a massive high school. Our sports teams were incredible. And so we got to do all this live broadcasting. And so when I went to Southern Illinois that I mentioned a minute ago, at the time they were ranked the number three radio TV school in the country. They actually came to us. It was like being an athlete. I signed a letter of intent huh. to go to their radio television program sitting in my high school TV studio. So it was a strange high school experience. I didn't realize it was strange at the time until I met a sure. lot of other people that didn't go to a high school that owned a TV station. Um, so yeah, it was just, it was an interesting background that I, I now look back on and I'm fascinated by it because I, I realize now how odd it was. Well, and it gave you a head start, didn't it, on your it career? It did, a huge uh, head start. Yeah, so 21 years uh, yep. at the ABC affiliate in yeah. Fort Wayne, then you took a jump into... Uh, into the hospital and yeah. the not-for-profit world of sorts. Tell us a little bit about that, but more so, 
uh, here in the last uh, couple minutes of this segment yeah. uh, about how God's used you in the community as a whole. Yeah, you know, as the TV thing started to change on me, Mark, I just felt like I really had this call in my life to use my skill set and to use my position in the community to do something meaningful and good and to have a real purpose to my career. And the weather is important. Sure. And talking about the weather, and there are times it's, it's life-threatening when we're talking about tornadoes and stuff. But most of the time, it's just telling people if it's going to be a little cooler, a little warmer, oh, is it going to rain today? And people get either really happy or annoyed by the news. And you don't, you, you kind of walk away from that sometimes thinking, I don't know if I'm doing anything that means all that much. Sure, sure. I wanted to do something that impacted people here currently, but maybe even grew the kingdom and had an eternal perspective to it. So getting into healthcare really helped me in two ways. It started to see my career in a different way, but then it also gave me the perspective of learning business and learning processes and budgets and all the stuff that I had kind of skipped out on doing TV. And so those five years at Parkview really set me up well to come to Crosswinds when Mark Terrell, our then CEO, uh, called me out of the blue. I, I told him I wasn't even interested. Parkview was, was filling my bucket. But Mark cast a vision of how we can help people, right. again, in the present and for the eternal. And it drew me in. And when I saw the tenets of culture that he had built the company on, I, I said, I can't. I can't think of a reason not to do this. I feel like God is calling me to it. Well, there's no question that uh, it is a special place. It is. And uh, as we've said, those, that, those of us that have uh, been blessed to be able to work together and come together, uh, it is a journey of faith and uh, being faithful. So I appreciate that. Uh, folks, we're going to be back <laughs> in a few minutes and continue our conversation with Curtis Smith as I am now your uh, sit-in <laughs> host here on Restoring Hope. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back. I'm your guest host this evening on Restoring Hope. I'm Mark Bow, And tonight we have turned the tables on our host, Curtis Smith. And uh, we've been talking about, in the first segment of the program, we talked about your journey, your life journey. Yeah. And uh, here in the last segment, we, we want to talk a little bit more about the here and the now, the present, the last year and a half of yeah. time that you've spent with Crosswinds, that you've been working with our, our parent organization, Lasting Change. And uh, let's, let's just start. We kind of left off about how your journey had been prepped about yeah. to do something more. And uh, now let's talk about what, what a day looks like mm. uh, for you at, uh, at Crosswinds Lasting Change. One of the things I love about this job, Mark, is that no two days look the same. Um, I, literally, I get home every night and my wife will say, what are you doing tomorrow? And I'll say, I don't know. Let's open up the calendar and look. Let's see. <laughs> Every day is different because I'm wearing a couple of different hats. So my, my main hat is the Chief Marketing and Communications Officer for Crosswinds Counseling. And getting a chance to tell the story of Crosswinds and connect people across the state has been so rich and rewarding. And that looks very different. Some days I'm hosting a TV show right here in Indianapolis. Some days I'm talking about a marketing campaign or working on some internal communication pieces. And that is all fun and rewarding. What's, what's been strange and different, but rewarding in a different way is that I've been connected to Lifeline, our sister company for the last few months about um, the work that we do in people's homes, helping right. them keep their families together, helping people who are in the court system, who are being helped by DCS and guiding some of the work that happens there. And it is just amazing, just like, um, we, we've heard from our counselors every week here at um, Restoring Hope, and, and the counselors in the Crosswinds world dive into such incredible work every day. It's the same thing on our Lifeline side. So I get to be connected to these powerful groups of people on both sides. It's amazing. You know, uh, when Crosswinds was born about 11 years ago, out of right. really the, the understanding and, and knowing that Lifeline's doing all this work in, yeah. in homes uh, with referrals from the courts and from the Department of Children's Services. And folks asked, well, how can we get help from, from Lifeline? And at that point in time, unless someone were you know, going to get in trouble or was a young guy that uh, is you know, out at Pearson Woods and in our uh, home-based program, uh, there was no option. And yeah. so Crosswinds really became that option, didn't it? It did. That's exactly how it was, uh, how it was born, Mark. It's 
you don't want to be a Lifeline customer. Yeah. And, and you don't want to, and we don't market to Lifeline, potential Lifeline customers because people don't want to be in the court system. Right. So we thought, how can we help them before they're at rock bottom, before they're in the court system, before someone's telling them they have to get help? For people who want to choose it themselves, what can we do? And so Crosswinds was born, and I think it's filled that void yeah, really nicely. Absolutely. Well, last year in 2021, over 17,000 hours yeah. of counseling services through Crosswinds. Uh, and and our, that our number counselors. could be nearly double here in 22. So the need is growing. Our ability to serve the need is growing. Mm -hmm. And to do it um, from a Christian perspective in a godly manner right. is such a blessing. So tell me, the, the last couple of months you mentioned that you've been over wearing another hat with yeah. Lifeline. Tell me the, the, the obviously a huge contrast be between what we do, yeah. although we deal with very difficult and challenging situations For with sure. crosswinds, but clearly with the folks that the team that you've been leading up in Northeast Indiana, you've, you've learned and observed a lot of things. Tell, tell me about it. Yeah, you know, I've learned and observed that there are a lot of people in dire situations. You know, we talk about that a lot here on this show about needing hope and some people don't have hope and how our counselors infuse that hope into people. And that is certainly true of people who have sought out counseling, but for the people that have not sought it out, for the people who have it mandated to them, there is a real lack of hope mm -hmm. in parts of this world, in parts of our state. And I think it's, it's right next to us. It's all around us in a way that sometimes we can miss. I recently did a shadow in someone's home and I couldn't believe it that, that people were living in those conditions, dealing with that level of stress every day. I, I went home and said to my wife, I, I don't know how these people are going to make it. I don't know how they survive every day, how they wake up and go every day, because I'm not sure I have the strength to do it. Well, and, and the level of appreciation that we have for our staff oh my goodness. Uh, that, are, that are doing that. I, I remember last year you and I w went up to Wheatfield, and mm. we spent some time with some of our, our HBS team. And it struck me, you yeah. know, that, uh, again, uh, the level of intensity uh, that those folks, our team members, go in yep. and the work we're doing is uh, just so critically important. Yeah, that's their lives every day. And they, they wake up not knowing what they're walking right. into every day. It's, it's amazing. Well, we've got a couple of minutes left. Yeah. Um, where do you see uh, crosswinds going? I mean, here we are, we're, you know almost to the middle of 2022, which is hard to believe. Yeah. Uh, but I, 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 I still see the smile. I see the glean in your eyes. I know that uh, there's just a lot of good things ahead, right? I love this place, Mark. And I think our mission and our vision are so critical. I think it's just what the world needs right now. Mm -hmm. I think it's this <coughs> level of hope and love and intentional, purposeful investing into people that we've got to have. We all have to come alongside and help each other. I think the pandemic maybe has made that a little more yep. obvious than it was a few years ago. And I think the future of Crosswinds is extremely bright. A few weeks ago, Rob Eicher, our new vice president of Crosswinds, was sitting in this seat. And we got to talk about some of the growth plans. And I think we've got incredible growth coming up in the near future that I know you're well aware yep. of and connected to. Growth here inside the state in the markets of both Fort Wayne and Indianapolis where we're strong, we're gonna get stronger. And then growing out to other markets and maybe even other states, I think that's not too far down the road. I could see us moving into an Ohio, a Michigan, an Illinois, a Kentucky. I think these states are ready for our services. There are people that need our help. We just need the counselors and therapists to come alongside and provide it. I think once that happens, it's just gonna blow up because what we do is so critical, and how we do it is so important. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Curtis, it has been an honor sitting in the chair. Well, it's yeah. an honor for me to sit with you, Mark, because it, it feels weird being on this side, I'm not going to lie, but because it's you, I, I was willing to do this. Wow. Mark does such incredible work for us every week in helping to get all of our guests lined up and make the show run. He is the engine behind the show. So, Mark, thank you for what thank you do every you. week. We will be right back. Welcome back. It is good to be back in my normal chair. Each week here on Restoring Hope, we focus on the word hope. Tonight, we welcome back Crosswinds Executive Abe Hepler. It's been a while since we've heard from Abe, and tonight he jumps into a deep topic, Revelation. Hi, my name's Abe. 
I'm one of the executives at Crosswinds. The last book in the Bible is a book called Revelation. Revelation is a fascinating book that's full of all kinds of really weird things, honestly. But it's a vision. The book of Revelation was actually a vision that was given to a man named John by Jesus Christ himself. And as John sees Jesus in this vision for the first time, Jesus makes a statement that I want us to look at together today. Jesus says this, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys to death and hell. Now, one of the things that I find so fascinating about this passage is that Jesus starts this interaction with John by telling him not to be afraid. Do not be afraid. And this is important for us as a starting point, too, because there are all kinds of things in our world that can make us afraid, that can create worry and doubt and stress and anxiety. But Jesus goes on to make a statement after that to John, and he says, I am the living one. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this is that John was with Jesus when Jesus died. John actually watched Jesus die, but Jesus appears to him alive again and says, I am the living one. And the important thing for us to remember about that is that as Christians, lots of times we focus our faith on the death of Jesus. But the resurrection of Jesus is what's most important for us. Jesus is not dead. He is alive, and he goes on to say to John, I am the first and the last. Jesus is making the point that he was at the beginning of all things. He will be at the end of all things, and today he is. Jesus is alive today, and he is actually waiting on us to reach out to him in our day-to-day -day lives and seek him and seek him him to be a part of who we are and what we're doing. But Jesus then makes a comment and he says this, I hold the keys of death and hell. And if Jesus is in control of these things, these incredibly big things that can create fear in our world, things like death and sickness, if Jesus is in control of those things, then Jesus is also in control of the little things that you and I face every single day. Jesus has the power to meet you where you are right now and help you with whatever it is you're facing. Welcome back to Restoring Hope with Crosswinds Counseling. It's time for our Counseling Corner segment, and tonight we welcome Carissa lopez Bacchus. It's her first time with us, and you may be curious to meet her. That's perfect, because she's going to talk to us tonight about curiosity. Hi, my name is Carissa lopez Bacchus. I am a licensed mental health counselor, a licensed professional clinical counselor, and an EMDR certified therapist and I work at Crosswinds Counseling. Today I'm going to kind of talk about a term that's maybe a little bit elusive, but I think it's a good place when somebody comes in and they don't have a lot of hope or they feel really stuck with something to kind of get a starting and a launching point. So this term that I'm going to talk about is probably one that's really common. It's called curiosity. And so I want to kind of explain why this is important, how we can practice it, and then what we would be curious about. So in looking at curiosity, this is important because a lot of times we can come to a place where we feel really stuck or trapped or lost. And so when we have this sense of curiosity, we're kind of open to the possibilities of hope and healing. And another reason why curiosity is important for us is because we have this term, it's called homeostasis. And this is kind of a fancy term, but essentially what it means is that our behavior essentially tries to fit into the status quo. We kind of try to create this state where everything maintains some sort of balance that we're familiar with. So a lot of times our behaviors will go through 
trying to create some sense of familiarity or balance. So even if we've been doing something that's been harmful or hurtful or dysfunctional, we will work really hard to create that familiarity and balance in our life. And so how does this look for us? One way that we can be curious is really by stopping and pausing. And essentially another way to say this is staying present. So finding ways that you can be in that exact moment. And so one way you could do this is by breathing. Another way you can do this is by orienting yourself in the place that you are. And so maybe it's looking at something or taking in a certain smell, maybe noticing how your body is in that moment to know that you are present and that you can kind of take a step back and really be ready to reflect or notice something. The last thing I wanted to touch on is what can we be curious about? We can obviously be curious about ourselves, who we are as a person. We can be curious about our history, our past. We can also be curious about our behaviors, our attitudes, our expectations. We can be curious about our relationships and also how, just in general, how we relate to ourselves and to other people. And so in this video, I kind of wanted to share why curiosity is important and what are different ways you can work through that. Because I think when we are curious, we're open to new ideas, new ways of being, and we really can move towards healing. Thanks, Carissa. It's always wonderful to hear from our counselors. If you would like to join Crosswinds as a counselor, please check out crosswindscounseling.org careers. We have openings right now. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And a big thanks again to our sponsors, Tesco, Shepherd Community Center, and Prime 47 Downtown. And of course, thanks to our friends right here at WHMB TV 40. We'll see you all next Thursday night at 930. Stay safe, have a great week, and be blessed.